Okay, well, might be a little overexposed here, but I'm wearing this hat the past few days, building this beast behind me, and uh, for this reason right here. <laughs> but the job's done. And I want to shorten this up a bit. I'm doing it over again anyway because I was foolish and had music playing in the background. Some internet show on Bar Rescue and I would have got struck. And uh, so, basically, I'm a newbie. I knew nothing about Aperture, ISO, oh, shutter speed. I knew nothing about that crap two weeks ago. Uh, most of the time, I used this little Sony Handy Camera. And uh, it does all the thinking for you. And that's probably a good idea. I'm not getting rid of it, trust me. And I'm not getting rid of OpenShot. I, I love OpenShot because you don't have to be a four-year graduate degree and movie making in Hollywood, California to run it. Uh, but, the simple has one caveat emptor. Simple means it probably isn't gonna wanna do the more fancy stuff you eventually you're gonna wanna do. And this is why I, I got into DaVinci, because uh, they have much better business ethics. If you give them your 300 bucks, you own the software. Well, you don't own the rights, no. but you own the privilege to use that software infinitely. No more reoccurring fees. And that doesn't mean four years down the road some big major update isn't going to cost you. Yeah, it probably could, especially if they come up with AK high-speed videos and a, a new uh, camera codec and all this crap. Yeah, you, you're, gonna, you're always going to be vulnerable to change. But for the most part, it's the old-fashioned, here's the software, here's your license key. Don't let us catch you trying to uh, do something wrong with it. And believe me, they have their ways of doing that. And that's it, you're done. This, this whole Adobe thing, leasing, I, I never get into leasing. I, I just don't believe in leasing software. I'm a Linux user. I don't even pay for my operating system. All right. Now, I don't mind paying for software that actually makes your life easier. Yeah, I've paid for some programs in Linux, and I don't care. It's not a sin. Uh, DaVinci free version is great, but it's almost like OpenShot. As soon as you want to get into fancy fusion, you know, de-speckle and uh, smoothing out and denoise, that's when they're going to ding you and say, you're going to buy me if you want this feature. So you're going to run into that. And I, I suggest put in the free version and if it feel, looks and feels like something you want, and give yourself a month. Don't judge this software the first time you open it up. You're going to go nuts, okay? If you get a YouTube browser going, how do I blah, 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 DaVinci Resolve, and get ready to take a lot of short 10-minute tutorials. There's a good, there's thousands of guys out there trying to help new newbies out like me. It doesn't work the same way OpenShot and other software works. It's pretty similar to Premiere, yeah. But uh, the, the, the simple stuff like Caden Live, no, it, doesn't, it doesn't operate like that. And oh, I love it, actually. The more, I hated it when it opened up, and then after two weeks of fiddling around and taking YouTube tutorials, I said, wow, this is really piss up. Yeah, I want this. So, now I'm going to do the, the uh, paid version, all right? There's the paid version. Hey, it'll be worth it. Anyway, that invoked my building this whole machine. And some of you out there are wondering, gee, I'd like the Linux free software and Blah, 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 but Jesus, DaVinci's fussy. It, it won't run on this, it won't run on that. Well, it's the same with Windows. DaVinci wants a real good video card, you know? 
they want 8 gig of uh, video RAM, you can get by with 4, barely, and watch out the next upgrade or the next update, 4 might not be enough. So don't go by the minimum numbers. I didn't do that here. I'm trying to not take too long to do this. That's why, uh, let's see, yeah. Oh, open shot, blah, blah, blah. yeah, I did have to mention, at first when you judge Da Vinci, it's gonna, you're going to judge all these software developers, they're a bunch of propeller head idiots, they just don't understand me. Well, no, we have to understand each other. We all have this thing called the pet cat virus. Problem exists between keyboard and chair, and in photographer's world, camera and ground and gag, okay? So give yourself, understand you, you lack knowledge in something that once you get it, you're gonna whip, wonder how you lived without it 10 years ago. And uh, I am I'm taking notes here because I talk in circles too much. All right, uh, the reasons for my hardware choices. All right, I got 128 gig of RAM. You only need 16, all right? I get an 850 watt power supply. You only need maybe 600. <coughs> it's called wiggle room, all right? I, uh, a, a Ryzen 5, $195 Ryzen 5 CPU will work. But I wanted the $400 Ryzen 9, 32 core extra poop, all right? I, I want to build this system once and I intend to pass away before I need another computer. That's how I, that's the way I was thinking when I built this thing. Uh, the, so, you know, give yourself the extra, you know, right? You don't need 16 gig of RAM, but give yourself 32 anyway, all right? And the video minimums for it, give yourself at least six because you don't know what for the update or upgrades coming down the road. <coughs> and don't jump on every upgrade. Uh, and I'll tell you why. This is, <coughs> this is the uh, next reason why. Uh, when you install DaVinci on anything but CentOS or Fedora, it's Red Hat based, their support. You're not going to get their support. Not even if you give me 300 bucks. If you put this on Linux, they clearly state this is not written for Linux, but yet everyone's doing it. And I'll tell you how it's done. You have to Google search this. I'll try and, I'll try, let me make that note. Oh, God, where are you, Pen? I know people really hate it when you talk about something and you don't put it in the description, okay? I'll try and give you the web address in the description on a converter that converts the .run files for Red Hat into .deb files for Linux. So let me write that down, web address, converter, all right. And uh, converter to .deb. Sorry, people. You know, that's why I get this crappy music going on in the background. There's a little metal spot, I'll drive you crazy. But we, I do want to make that easy for you. Get a, go on YouTube and search how to use this converter. It's pretty straightforward and simple, but you know, it's simple after you know how, okay? It's not simple if you don't know how. So, YouTube's your best friend right here. So get the converter to convert the .run file to the .deb file so you can install DaVinci into Mint. Now, you can get the apt get packages and force it to go into Mint without this conversion. But here's the problem. If you like the software enough to get the paid version, you will never, ever uninstall the free version because you just installed it the wrong way. There's no uninstall executable. There's no package manager remove. You, you did it wrong. It's in there for life. The only way you can get the paid version is whack your whole C drive, reinstall your operating system, and then install a paid version. <clears throat> Do yourself a favor and use the uh, dot run to dot dead converter. That way, 
when you go into your uh, command prompt, apt get remove, apt remove or apt uninstall DaVinci, is because you did it the right way, <coughs> there are a lot of files in there, it's going to know what you mean, it's going to know where all the hidden stuff is, and clean it. Then the paid version will slip right in and you didn't have to reprogram your whole computer. Because you did it the right way. And this is why don't be upgrade happy. Because you have to, every upgrade, you're going to have to do the same thing. Pain in the ass, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, moving right along here. Uh, encourage. All right. Okay. Well, it's not that important. <laughs> there are uh, YouTube channels out there called Royalty Free Music. That's probably what you're listening to right now. I play steel guitar. Okay. Upright bass and uh, rhythm guitar. It's one of my toys. And uh, let's see. But the stuff I play is uh, familiar melodies by artists, like A11 by Johnny Paycheck. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Even though I'm playing all the instruments, I, I play about six instruments. I sound like a whole band when I'm done. A lot of you guys are doing it. That's nothing new out here. But if you're playing somebody else's tune, even as an instrumental, I think I could get into trouble. So I had to pick crappy elevator music. Sorry, I don't like techno. I never did. Uh, and some things that were like sports and action. Yeah, I think te techno's great. It's high energy. But what I'm doing here isn't high energy. It's think tank or it. I'd rather have Tchaikovsky. But if I use Cincinnati Pops Orchestra version of Tchaikovsky, I'm going to get whacked. All right, so, you know, the black buses, the black vans, and the helicopters will be outside. So let, let's not do that. And uh, that's it. And on to the quick little modules from here and how the build went. This is the bulk of the video right here. Uh, I want to explain to you, I got the, oh, what do they call that? The motherboard is an 8550 Vision. Let me tell you, I went way over the top in the motherboard. <coughs> I spent $250 on the motherboard you only should have to spend 100 on. I wanted the extra features, the fire ports and all that stuff, because I'm, I'm a techie, I'm a geek. I like blowing things up. There's more smoke coming off this bench than there is productivity. I'm in my element when I have a fire extinguisher in my hand. Uh, but I have that, I went... Uh, Always go a little higher on your power supply. I went 850. I only calculated I needed 400. Well, you don't want to work something 100% all the time and wonder why it burns out every nine months. Okay. Uh, what else did I do over the top? Yeah, the RAM was over the top, 128 gig. Uh, video is never over the top. You can never afford enough. I did uh, six or eight gig. I'm not sure which one, but I went over the minimum because you want wiggle room in that video card and GeForce is the way to go and I'll tell you if you're running Linux GeForce released all their drivers and handed them over to the Linux community so now we can run all of their video cards as proprietary hardware and DaVinci demands that DaVinci does not work on open GNU I think they call it uh, no, it won't work you need proprietary hardware video card, some Intel chips, uh, most Ryzen chips, and Ryzen gives you a better deal. You get more cores and speed for the buck. That's why I'm, I'm a fan of AMD Ryzen, all right? So uh, it, it was an Intel board with a Ryzen chip. Hey, how does that work? Socket 4 for AMD. That's all you have to know. And uh, your motherboard will run the Ryzen chips. Uh, anything else that's over the top that you don't have to spend? Ooh, not really. Oh yeah, I went. Uh, I spent a hundred dollars on a cooling fan for KVM hard drive. The 
KVM, they're the fastest drives, but they're also the most unreliable. I've seen them get hot. I'm a technician at a college in town, all right? Uh, right here. Uh, <coughs> and I've seen KVM drives just heat up and pop after two or three days, especially on laptops. There's no heat sink. Now, on desktops, they have a nice big heavy metal heat sink. Fine. But I put a cooling fan with a liquid filled radiator and cooling fan, not a pump, but the heat rise system on top of my uh, KVM drive to keep that at room temperature. That sucker is not getting hot. And I overdid it with the uh, CPU cooler. I had, you'll see in this video, I had trouble fitting them. And I had to explicitly delete out a lot of profanities because my Irish temper just hits the roof and things like this happen. But uh, that's it. This has gone on long enough. On, on to the next segment. I got a remote control. Okay, well, the shit started. I'm packing the stuff from the thing I'm a jig, praying that they. And let's see if the autofocus is working on this. There we go. So it's begun. Case, motherboard, and crap. Here we go. Here we go. Five hours later. We're making progress. supplies installed. You kind of hide it underneath here. There we go. I know it's a little dark. All the parts are dark. Let me get some light on that thing. Yeah, that might help. Main drive, CPU, CPU cooler, which I haven't put in yet. Uh, the main drive cooler, that's liquid cool. Memory slots aren't installed yet, and neither is the video card. I'm just being careful, I'm going over everything twice. You plug the wrong wire here into the wrong slot, and poof! Bye bye, 1800 bucks. But we're doing good. A little slow. I expected to make more progress than this in five hours. But I'm looking stuff up on the internet, reading the book thrice to make sure I don't cross wires. So, that's an update. Now, well, you see it's five in the morning. Still at it. Everything a mess. But a whole lot of progress being made. No disasters except this little bugger right here, the Cooler Master, and that fan, and the mounting hardware underneath. Is that pain in the? Oh, it's a pain in the ass. God, if I could do this again, I'd buy something else. The pancake cooler wouldn't have worked with with this uh, KVM cooler here. Now the second KVM's got a terabyte in it, but it's not going to work hard. That's not going to do all the uh, computing. <laughs> and uh, sheesh, what a nuisance! Just squeezing the uh, memory. See the way it's just squished in there. The four memory cards. Yeah, I had to. I had to fill them all up. I'm greedy. More is better. I'm an '80s lady. 
Weed is good, but that's it. It's going okay, but as usual, there were some caveat enters. And I've managed to really roast my man cave. Yeah, let's get a look at this from a distance. <laughs> Christ. And I got a lot of reading to do in the manual. Gotta set the sea moss, go straight into sea moss for these things before you just let it boot up. If something's overclocked, poof! Bye bye. So, I gotta make damn sure when this thing boots it goes into sea moss. Other than that, we, we're getting there. How to build a $4,000 computer for $1,800. Oh, this is out. Later. Okay, I had to cut in. I gotta uh, narrate through this part. I go into a potty mouth rant that a World War II veteran soldier has never heard. <laughs> I really hated the brackets on this cooler. Uh, no fault of the motherboard, but the mounting hardware was just convoluted. It was really miserable. And uh, it was uh, five in the morning, so. An Irishman has no filter for his uh, profanities at 5 a.m. Uh, anyway, as you, as you can see, I uh, had a cooler. I'm pointing the flashlight at it now. That there was a cooler between the CPU cooler and the video card, and that was for my main drive. I wanted to keep that cool. KVM cards have a problem. They get too hot if you work them hard. And uh, then it squished into the memory RAM modules, that CPU cooler. You had to squish it in there. It felt like Jeff Foxworthy doing this, you know? But, uh, you know, that you run into problems. You, know, you have to be a problem solver if you're gonna build your own computer. Now, I could have just bought something else, buy a different cooler and not cool off the main drive. That wouldn't be very smart. So, but uh, boy, did I make a mess out of that place. Look at that. Oh, my God. It looked like Yucca Flats after the blast. Jesus. Like a gang raid at a radio shack or something. Ugh. Yeah, good thing I'm on vacation. It'll take me half of it to clean up the mess. What what a mess. Yeah, it's five in the morning. The project's 70% done. I got to hook up all the little stuff. I'll have to read the manual to hook the right ones up to the right place. You know, the LED lights, your earphone speakers, and blah, 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 on and off switch. But I'll have to go into CMOS before I fire it up. Make sure I don't overdrive the CPU or the video card and poof. That's it for now. Happy times. On first boot, a thumbnail drive, it booted into the install. No errors. And uh, I have to narrate because I did it again. I had this stupid TV program on. A bunch of chicks screaming their tails off. You'd think I was watching an adult movie or something. Uh, I wish those memory cards didn't light up like a Christmas tree. Success. No errors. That thing on top is a Wi-Fi antenna. Me and my neighbor share keys as a secondary backup in case that hard wire that I was just touching goes wrong. If you don't want to get hacked up, shut your Wi-Fi off and use hard wire to plug into your internet. <clears throat> it's not 100% foolproof. I'm the foolproof, but it cuts down on your. It makes it harder for you to. Be hacked. So, and 
right now I'm fooling with the camera a lot. I'm new to all of this. New to a real Canon camera. New to DaVinci software. Ugh. I don't know nothing about what I'm doing, but that's why it's so much fun. I've built a lot of computers, but I've never built them on this high end. It pushed me to the limit. But, uh, I had nightmares of turning the thing on and kaboom! There goes 1800 bucks. <laughs> it's always a crapshoot when you build your own. One slip of the screwdriver and you're done. Uh, it would cost you $3,500 anyway to just go into a store and buy this computer. And you can build it yourself with $1,800 worth of parts. And 27 hours later. Now, I took my time because, you know, I, I was looking stuff up on the internet to make sure I didn't do anything wrong. And uh, a guy that builds a high-end gaming computers all day long, he probably could have built this in two or three hours. There's a lot I didn't know about the new stuff. And uh, since business computers at work are plain simple games, they're, they're nothing. But this was interesting. Okay, you know, that's it for now. Well, here we are. Honestly, I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to trip this thing up. I guess I'd better put this on pause. Camera Conspiracy, by the way. Excellent, excellent channel if you're into photography and editing software and what to buy, what not to buy. And you like a twist of humor in a content creator. Camera Conspiracies, yeah. He's cool. Uh, Here's the final end. Final end. You saw the mess that I made. But, uh, make sure this bloody thing is focusing. There we go. And this is the final end. All together. And here it is. That's a, uh, I, I always have some sort of an audio mixing board. I like control over my audio, multiple inputs, microphone, crap like that. You can see that setup I have right there. And uh, when I run OBS software, which I, I probably will do, I'll show you how DaVinci Resolve works for editing these videos. But I got my uh, dual monitor, one stand holds two, and uh, everything's working. Uh, the reason why I built this computer is uh, right here. This is what started off the whole freaking project. This piece of software here. You cannot run it on a piece of crap computer. It just will not fly. There are specifics, especially the video card. And uh, if you want DaVinci to work, get a GeForce. There are others that will work, but the best ones are the GeForce video cards for DaVinci. Especially if you're running Linux, because uh, NVIDIA is part of GeForce and they gave up their drivers for the Linux community. So now we have proprietary hardware drivers for our video. And you have to have that to run DaVinci. It won't work in OpenGPL. Nope. And uh, investigate before you buy because you have to convert MP4 files to uh, ProRes Apple files before you can even edit them on the software. Now there's, a, there's software to do that job. Uh, it's called Shutter. It's free. Everything's free in Linux except DaVinci, of course. And why are we opening up on my super high-res screen? God, I just used the left monitor for 4K video. Uh, 
This is real easy. Just drag and drop an MP4 in there, hit start function, and pop! Out comes a ProRes Apple file that DaVinci Resolve can uh, work with. And it's 10-bit. So, that doesn't mean if you took a video on an 8-bit camera that you're going to add 2 bits of dynamic range to it. No. But you have that wiggle room in case you push your luck a little bit with something. So it doesn't hurt to have it, but it's you can't you can't get 25 gallons of gas out of a 20 gallon gas tank. It's just not going to happen. But anyway, that's the software that started this whole fiasco. And now I can return my employer's computer back to work where it belongs. And that's it. I uh, it, it's a Ryzen nine. The sevens will work, but I, I wanted the extra poop, so I got the Ryzen 9 and I got the a, a, uh, 8 gig GeForce video card. Uh, anything 4 or more will work. You can trim a little fat there. As you can see, I stopped 4 32 gig memory modules in there, so I got 128 gig of RAM. And the KVM drives, which is... Uh, the fastest ones. Are they the most reliable? I don't know. It's a new technology. I'm finding it hard to believe that they're going to last as long as maybe the SSD solid state drives, the two and a half inch jobbies. Uh, we'll see. They, they have a heating problem, which is why I got a liquid cooled heater and fan on my KVM main drive, just to make sure that sucker is at room temperature and never gets warm cost me $80 just to make sure that thing stays cool and you can see that humongous fan in there to keep my CPU cool and that's it uh, I hope this thing stayed in focus and uh, yep that's uh, camera conspiracies right there I still have a lot of housekeeping to do uh, empty boxes and crap everywhere but the project is complete and I'm happy with it. It's Linux Mint running DaVinci Resolve. And uh, <clears throat> that's it. It's done. Ta-ta.